I'm in Angola right now in a, in a city called Luanda. And um, Tony Ngoshi is the writer of a story called Ngola, which is the true story of a king in, uh, in Angola. As a director, I obviously need to understand what the writer has you know, brought in in the, in the story. I need to get inside the writer's head. So um, in order for me to do that, I've uh, developed the Joseph Campbell's breakdown of uh, any film, which is called The Hero's Journey and basically exists of an Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. And within Act 1, you've got the ordinary world, you've got the call to adventure, you've got the refusal of the call, you've got the test allies and enemies and meeting the mentor. Sometimes we can switch things around a little bit. In this case, the test allies and enemies comes before the meeting the mentor because that's just the way Ingola's life worked. And then Act 2, we've got the crossing the first threshold, we've got the approach to the inmost cave, supreme ordeal, the reward. That's happens any time between sort of 20 minutes and uh, 60 minutes I guess and then you've got act three which is the road back the resurrection the return of the elixir or in this case the return of the sword so um, and that happens between the 60 minute mark and the 90 minute mark now for me obviously Tony understands the the history of um, Angola very well I don't I'm also not Portuguese at all so it's been a very um, big challenge for me to understand the language but also to understand the journey of this king. So Tony came up with the brilliant idea of introducing Weza, who is a young girl. And the reason that he's introduced her into the story is because we have to incorporate modern times with old, with the, with the history of the exposition of Angola. Okay. So um, the idea of bringing Weza in was to allow the audience to identify modern times versus um, the past tense, which in this case was 1520 in that era. Uh, which is where Angola uh, claimed Angola, Angola as, a, um, as an African nation. So anyway, in this case, Weza um, was alone in the story and, then she, and, and Tony came up with the idea that she, she had this play at the end of the film where the story of Angola would be played out. But I switched it around a little bit just to help the audience understand or identify um, Angola's life and Wes's role as, uh, as a reincarnated spirit of either Angola or in this case would be um, uh, Kaluku, which is uh, Angola's wife. So without confusing the story too much, Weza was brought in, but then I incorporated something else, which was a young boy at the same age as Weza, who would then lure Weza into the spirit realm during the course of this play where the play is unfolding and as the play is unfolding the audience are watching this play but we have catapulted into the spirit world with Weza as she is undoing or as she is rolling out this play to the audience in the actual uh, physical world we uh, catapult into Weza's spiritual world with this young boy who lures her into the spiritual world and sits her down and tells her the story of Angola. The reason why we need this young boy to tell the story to Weza is because we can't lay out Angola's life not understanding how it all happened. Like we need somebody to have known. So this young boy is actually carrying the spirit of Angola because he knows what happened in the future of Angola's life. He knows what happened in the past of Angola's life as well. So he's able to sit Weza down in this little hut, um, which is called Chota. It's a Chota hut, beautifully, you know, it's just a great way to be able to really bring creative uh, elements or be creative as far as the culture is concerned. Um, beautiful lighting, you know, smoking village, lovely little hut, little fire in there. It can be a really beautiful, um, creative, dramatic scene. While this young boy explains to Weza the story of Angola. And then um, we sort of flash in and out of their little hut, um, which is sort of very symbolic as well. Um, and while we're flashing in and out of this hut, we're telling the story or the story of Angola, the king is being unfolded until the very end. So during this course of the story, um, we want to rest the audience a little from the complexities of what's going on in Angola's life. The way we do that is the reward here is actually Weza's intermission in the play. So the play is quite long, but she's getting so wound up in this play. She, she's become part of this place to such an extent that she's forgotten about the audience. So they actually sort of bring her back to reality because she's so captivated by it. 
and when she wakes up on the stage or when she, when she comes back to the real world, um, she's sort of you know, confused because she's been so deep into the spirit world. So in this intermission, after all her confusion, the teacher stands up on the announcement and says, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short interval, you know, while uh, Weza gathers her thoughts. So Weza goes back into the change rooms or into the makeup room, and you can tell that she's very sort of confused by what's happened, but also very um, deep into it, very captivated by what happened. Um, and she does a little bit of research and in during this process she discovers that the boy she's talking to is actually the spirit of Angola the king. So she's done a little bit of research so when she goes back into the spirit world she has a new knowledge of, of um, the boy but what she doesn't know is she's actually carrying the spirit of Kaluku which is um, Angola's, Angola's um, wife. So. Um, that it explains why Weza is chosen for this journey because she's actually carrying the reincarnated spirit but she doesn't know it. This boy has been chosen to tell her. So this journey unfolds and what actually happens in this sort of circle is that Weza leaves her ordinary world. She enters a new world which is the spirit realm and um, it's a physical realm in, in a sense that we're witnessing it, but it's also a spiritual realm. So during this circle, she, re she enters this new world as her old self. She goes through a process of physical change, a metaphoric change, emotional change, spiritual change, and um, she re-enters her old world in her new self. And that's knowing that she is now carrying the spirit of Kaluku. Um, so she is all the wiser, all the, she's obviously, there's a lot of change. She's had a change, the story's changed, she has to have changed because everything is about change, everything is about growth. And the fact that in the beginning of the story, she was being bullied by people, but she still stood her ground because she's carrying the soul of Kaluku. So Kaluku is a very strong woman. So she stood her ground, she put the one bully down, but at the same time, she's very misunderstood. People sort of see her as an outsider, uh, as a sort of a, a supreme being in a sense, so they're intimidated by her. So you can tell that she's a very different human being, which is why she's chosen by this boy to uh, lure into the spirit world to, to connect to the spirit of um, Kaluku because he is connected to the spirit of Ingolo. So through this change, we, she comes back as the new self and um, she in herself is, realizes that she is carrying the spirit of Kaluku, which allows her in the end of the story to be able to become the narrator and help the audience identify what's actually going to happen after um, the king has been um, after the king's climatic uh, battle, or Piela Diaz, has been, his body has been discovered. So that's kind of the climatic story on the physical journey of N'Golo. And then something else happens after that. But we don't want to slow the story down after that climatic change by bringing it too, po or making it too political. So it's important for Weza to then continue that story through a montage of visuals and um, kind of a, a revisit to what we did in the beginning of the story, which was a montage of uh, a soul or a spirit traveling through all the light, uh, through the animals, creating the illusion that the world is made up of all these various light forms or all these various energies and everybody's connected. So she finishes that off in our, in the cycle, which is very important. So that's kind of Reza's role. And then the boy, um, the way I wanted to finish that off is in the spirit world, she is, um, she is understanding the sadness of N'Golo's life. And um, she then understands that her role has been to carry the spirit of Kaluku. And um, she obviously, there's, when the boy tells Kaluku or tells Weza, who's carrying Kaluku's spirit, that N'Golo suffered a, a, a death at 55 and that there's sadness and she hugs him. And as she hugs him, we do a match move around her in the spirit world. And as we move around her, the camera is exactly, stays exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the background. So from the hut we go, from inside the hut, we're going around her, hugging this boy. As we go around her, the background of the hut disappears, becomes the stage, and she's hugging nothing. The boy is no longer there, he's gone, because obviously he was a spirit. And at that point, people have come to realize that she is carrying the soul of Kaluku, 
which makes her supreme to everybody else and they now can fully understand why she's been so obsessed to tell the story about Angola um, to allow people to understand their culture better and understand the importance and the spiritual part of their culture and why it's so important not to lose your roots. So um, the story goes full circle and um, as, as, as uh, Tony so uh, beautifully put it, it's Imoshi and helps people to understand that we are all one, we're all connected um, and this is pretty much the exact journey that we as a human being are going to go through in that we have to have, we have to understand our calling, each and every one of us have a calling and it's not an easy thing to do to uh, accept the call or accept the summon um, and I feel like we're all summoned in some way, some people hide that summoning and they live a miserable life and they hide it with alcohol or drugs or whatever because it's not easy. It takes hard work, it takes courage and um, that's exactly the, the role that Ngolo plays, that's exactly the role that Weza plays, that's exactly the role that Koluku plays and actually the young boy that plays the role of uh, Ngolo as the spirit world. And the fact that when she's hugging him and he disappears on that, on that final match move means that his soul has gone on to do much more amazing things. So, you know, myself and Tony were sitting out after we kind of put this whole Euros journey together and it's quite emotional when you think about the, the journey that this man has gone through. You know, it was a very hard journey, even though he had moments, moments of beauty where he, you know, met this wonderful woman and they had a child. But at the same time, his journey has been very heavy. There's been a lot of pressure ever since he was a young boy. You know, he went through the whole thing, even as a blacksmith, and he was summoned by these messengers and then he had to perform his duty and every single st step of the way was a challenge as far as the crossing the river, building the bridge and then, then fighting, being betrayed, the, the, the three wars that he went through, not to mention the, the stuff that, that's not in the script and then of course um, being betrayed by his own people. So, um, you know, we all have that really in the end of the day. But um, yeah, that's the kind of complete story now we have to put it in an English version in a um, format that allows the software to build us a structure or build us a schedule. Once we can schedule the film, then we can budget it. Once we can budget it, then the magic begins where we can start finding the, the money for this film or the finance and um, making it happen hopefully this year if possible. Uh, and then I will come back to uh, Angola and, uh, and shoot this film with Tony. But right over here, we have, uh, this is obviously every single, every single character and every single story has to have these three fundamental aspects. One is the objectives, one is the obstacles, and what do they have to, over what do they have to do to overcome the obstacles? That's pretty much everybody's day-to-day -day challenges, really, if you think about it. You wake up, you have to go to school, you don't want to go to school, the hero's journey is there, you know, you have the ordinary world, you have the call to adventure, you have the refusal of the call, I don't really want to go to school. Then you have your tests, allies, enemies, you have bullies, you have your mentors, which could be your teachers, could be your parents. Then you have the crossing the first threshold, where you've got to get through that first little step of the day to just kind of, okay, I'm in it, I'm there. Then it's the approach to the inmost cave, maybe you've got an exam or, you know, you've got a test or you've got to do a play and you've got to get on stage, you've got to say a speech. And you've got your supreme ordeal where it's like you're tired at the end of the day but things keep hitting you, you run out of lunch, you know, you're tired, you're worn out um, and then at the end of the day you've got the return with the sword where you finish the school, you've done, you've got your books, you've done, you're heading home and you're going to go and get some lunch and that's the return with the sword. So that's like pretty much everybody's day-to-day -day basis. So objective obstacles, overcoming obstacles, each and every character has that. We have to break down, it's very, very important. On top of that, we've got what is the ticking clock of the story and then what is the love theme. And we've also got layers. Layers are like how the film's going to be color corrected. That is one layer. In this case, we've got probably four different textures. One is Wes's life. Then um, we go into the spirit world, which is another texture, another another kind of color correction. So it'll be it'll be colored differently, textured differently. And then we've got Ngolo's life, which will be colored differently. So every time we step from one world to the other, the color temperature, the color texture changes, color correction changes, just to help the audience understand what um, era we're in. Are we in the spirit world? Are we in Ngolo's world? Or are we on the play in the real present world? So. That's one layer, then another layer would be the fact that there's this play going on 
Um, so it's a story within a story within a story because we've got the play happening. We've got Wes's world, which is in the spirit world. Her story is being unfolded through this young boy. And then we've got Ingola's story, which is being told to Wes by this young boy. So we've got these three different realms. Makes the story very, very complicated in a sense, but also beautiful because it keeps moving. It keeps the audience entertained and um, it creates suspense. So that is it. And then uh, Tony was kind enough to put the map together, which allows us to really pin everything. So. Tomorrow I'll make little charts here on the on the walls with arrows pointing to what certain what happened when and where and how it becomes full circle, just to allow us all to put a map to uh, to uh, Ingola's life. So yeah, to everybody that was involved in getting me on board this project, thank you very much. I'm very excited about uh, doing this. I've, I've always loved culture. I've always loved traditions and being able to return to our roots, allowing people to step away from material things and just return to the bare basics of what our life is about, what is our journey. Forget about hiding stuff with houses and fancy cars and smart TVs and all that. What is the journey of our soul or what is your hero's journey? So uh, I feel like this is a calling. So uh, for all of those involved in bringing me here, Imoshi. <laughs> <laughs> Cool.